when the mindfulness is uh, continuous without any interruption and uh, un unmindfulness does not interfere and that is why Buddha said you don't worry about the, the words that I use but uh, this is what he said, the Buddha said Sati Hoti Asam Mutta Sati Sambhajjango Tasmin Samaye Bhikkhuno Aradho That is the important word <coughs> When the unmindfulness has not interfered that means mindfulness is going on continuously and that is the time enlightenment factor of mindfulness begins enlightenment factor of mindfulness begins when the mindfulness continues without being interrupted by unmindfulness you see this is very important thing to remember Mindfulness must continue. You will see uh, when you pause for, um, for a while sometimes and ask whether your mindfulness is continuous. If it continues for, a, for an hour, two hours, a day, two days, then you know mindfulness is continuous, no interruption. When you see that it is continuous without interruption, that is the beginning of the mindfulness factor of enlightenment. At the beginning, at the preliminary stage, mindfulness factor enlightenment is not started, even not even started, not even begun. Ordinary stage, it is just a preliminary work of mindfulness. So we have to um, you know, do this groundwork properly, establish ourselves in mindfulness and let it be continuous. And then mindfulness factor of enlightenment begins. <laughs> you see? Tasmin Same Bikuno Aradho Hoti Satisam Bodjango Bodjango Tasmin Same Bikuno Aradho Aradho means beginning starting. Then he used more vigor, more enthusiasm, uh, more strength, more effort to maintain it. And here again, earlier Atapi Remember the word atap we use at the beginning? Atap means uh, effort. In the, the very first sentence you can see atapi, a t a p i. Atapi, a t a p i. Effort. So even when you, throughout your practice, you maintain mind, uh, mindful, mindful effort all your practice to gain mindfulness and when mind, even when the mindfulness goes on smoothly without interruption you maintain it with effort you know one of the, the, the fourth effort we always must remember fourth effort is what is the fourth effort? effort to maintain support sustain cultivate not to forget now that is called uh, also uh, uh, parakramadhatu. Parakramadhatu, the element of sustaining, maintaining. Now, element of sustaining and the effort of sustaining sustain mindfulness. And then, when mindfulness factor of enlightenment arises we use the same effort, uh, element of effort and sustaining effort. 
So the word atapi uh, goes through from the beginning to the end of the practice. It, we will never weaken it. Even when we gain mindfulness factor of enlightenment, we use effort to maintain it. Otherwise, we might lose it. So Buddha said, uh, uh, at that time, the mindful, the mindful uh, meditator exert energy, apply energy to maintain it, support it, sustain it, nourish it. How we nourish that? Even for the nourishment of mindfulness factor of enlightenment, we need yonso manasikara. Yonso manasikara means the mindful reflection. Mindful reflection to maintain mindfulness factor of enlightenment. And Buddha has mentioned in several places, lack of mindful reflection is the lack of mindful reflection, we suffocate mindfulness. But mindful reflection would nourish the root of mindfulness, factor of enlightenment. Now here again, the second important factor of the Noble Eightfold Path comes handy. One is effort, second is mindful reflection. Then again, mindful reflection, mindful effort will not do their job without understanding. Therefore, right understanding also comes in. What is the understanding? We want to maintain the enlightened factor of mindfulness for the purpose of attaining enlightenment. Yeah. Three elements, elemental efforts, as a basis, root, that's why they are called dhatu. And uh, other fourfold are based on this dhatu or this element. They are supportive of the fourfold efforts. Aramadhatu, Nikramadhatu, Parakamadhatu, even if you are uh, fourfold effort is uh, weakening, those elements are there to give you a boost. That's why they are called supportive. So, when the mindfulness is uh, mindfulness factor of enlightenment, with your effort, with your mindfulness, you maintain it, support it, sustain it, not to let it become weak. And then, uh, the Sutra says, Santangva Ajyatang Satisambhojyangang Atime Ajyatang when the mindfulness factor of enlightenment is present in him, he understands the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is present in him. In page 34, you can see that. Now, this is the time he knows, he or she knows, that the mindfulness factor of enlightenment is there. When you have developed, cultivated, maintained, support, then you know that it is there. Or, when the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is absent in him, that means before he gained this awareness, he knows, I still don't have it. I've been practicing mindfulness, 
I have been practicing mindfulness all along, but it is still not the mindfulness factor of enlightenment. Why? Because sometimes you lose it. Something else interferes. Unmindfulness interferes your mindfulness. And when it happens very often, you know, mindfulness factor of enlightenment is not there. So when it arises, when it is continuous and supported by your effort, then you know, now I'm there. It is there in me. You make this uh, assessment not only sitting in, on the meditation cushion. While walking, you will see the mindfulness factor of enlightenment is there, walking in you. While uh, standing, uh, in any situation, we always don't assume that all this happens only in sitting meditation. These things can happen anytime. And then, mindful, me mindful meditator knows, yeah, now I have it. Before I did not have it, now I have it. Then, he understands the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is absent, and he understands how an arisen enlightenment factor of mindfulness arises. How does he know that it, is, that it arises? There are no gaps in mind. No gap. No gap. So, you watch your mind, you see morning, it was interrupted. Noon, it was interrupted. Evening, it is not interrupted. Then you know, ah, mindfulness as factor of enlightenment is there. Next morning, you don't have it. But noon, you may have it continuously for so, so several hours. Then you know mindfulness factor of enlightenment is there. Mindfulness factor of enlightenment is not something permanently established yet, because you, are not, you have not attained enlightenment. But you are bringing it to your mind because of your constant, continuous uh, practice, you bring it to your mind. So, in a one time, you say, uh, how to bring to perfection the arisen enlightenment factor of enlightenment. How to bring it to perfection? Now you have mindfulness factor of enlightenment, Several times you saw it coming and going, coming and going. How you make it a perfection? Parami. <laughs> Mind, uh, what do you call uh, Sati Parami. Uh, you make it, uh, bring it to perfection by repeated practice, using effort. You know, that is the fourth, fourfold effort, the function of the fourfold effort. We had to repeat the, the function of the fourfold effort. Uh, one makes effort, uh, I can re recite it in Pali, but when I go <laughs> to English, I forget. Uh, okay. This passage, at least, we must remember all the time. That is, effort to maintain and perfect wholesome mental states already arisen, and not to allow them to disappear, but to bring them to growth, maturity and to the full perfections of development by making effort, stirring up energy, and exerting mind. So the fourfold, fourth effort on page 13 of 
Vandana book. You can read that. So when you maintain and support with the fourfold, fourth fold, uh, fourth effort of the fourfold efforts, then you bring the mindfulness factor of enlightenment to perfection. Then what happens? Uh, you know that it is perfect. When it is perfect, what would you do with that? When mindfulness factor of enlightenment is perfect, you got to use it. Use it for investigation. How do we investigate? What do we investigate? This is where a real deep uh, awareness, understanding of Dhamma comes in. You investigate suffering. Now you can investigate suffering because you are mindful. You will not be narrow-minded to shun it, to say, oh, it is pessimistic, it is all, uh, uh, I don't have any suffering, and this and that, without giving any excuse, you just look at suffering as it is. Then you see the cause of suffering, how it arises. Cause of suffering is uh, desire, but the cause of suffering, as suffering arises along with birth. Jati Pacha, Jara Marana, Soka Parideva, Dukkha Do Manasupayasa, Sambhavanti. Dependent on birth, growth, decay, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair arises. You cannot avoid that. We will see the pathologists these days try to find the cause of death. <laughs> Buddha gave a very simple cause of death. Birth. <laughs> Birth is the cause of death. We are trying to find out the cause of old age. Birth is the cause of old age. We are trying to find the cause of sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. The cause of all this is birth. Now, this kind of sweeping statement Buddha made because it is truth. There is no way around it. <laughs> no matter how, we hard, how hard we try to uh, manipulate these statements, you cannot manipulate. When we mindfully investigate, we see there is uh, pain, there is sorrow, lamentation, grief, there is an old age, there is sickness, there is separation from loved ones. All this I go through, I have gone through. This happens to this body and mind. There is no escape. I am born. And therefore, all this happens. So the cause of all these things I see is my birth. What is the cause of my birth? Grasping, upadana, clinging. Since there is clinging, natural result of clinging is birth. Investigate. What is the cause of birth? Dependent on what birth, uh, what you call clinging arises? Because of craving. We investigate. You can see this investigation exactly like this only in the Buddha's teaching. 
you investigate because of craving clinging arises how craving arises because of feelings pleasant unpleasant or neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling craving arises you can even investigate that how can craving arises from pain when we say cause of craving is is feeling pain is one feeling how can craving arises from pain then we see because i don't like pain i like pleasure i like pleasure i don't like pain so i crave for pleasure and crave to crave for rejecting pain so either way there's a craving we crave for one and we crave for something which is not there what is not there is pleasure so i crave for that when that comes i crave for it when it goes away i crave for what is gone so where is this craving come from what the craving depends on uh, feeling the feeling depends on what contact contact is the uh, designated designated contact designation contact or impingement contact designation contact is uh, the contact physical contact uh, when eyes ears nose tongue body and body we have a contact that is called designation contact impingement contact is the mental contact because all these things impinge in our mind whether it is coming through the eyes ears nose body and t- tongue the contact real true deep meaningful contact takes place in the mind therefore it is called impingement contact everything impinges in the mind so the feeling arises because of dependent on contact where does the contact come from either from six senses or from mentality and materiality contact arises from mentality and materiality or from six senses according to mahanidana sutta contact arises from depending on mentality and materiality according to popular dependent origination contact arises dependent upon six sense bases then where does mentality and materiality come from consciousness and consciousness comes from where depending on mentality and materiality and mentality and materiality depends on what eh ignorance ignorance so you go back investigating this is the entire dependent origination we use in the factor enlightenment factor of investigation so when we investigate we don't leave out anything we investigate suffering we investigate the cause of suffering and then we investigate the end of suffering the same way we go through the same process and see when the ignorance is eliminated suffering will be eliminated we investigate is this body permanent 
or impermanent? Ask questions. You know, one thing we, when we do, when we investigate, you, are, you become a private investigator. What do you, would you do? You go and ask questions. When you want to do some research, what would, what would you do? You ask questions. Exactly the same way we ask ourselves questions. We don't go out and ask people questions. Our body and mind are the domain, the field, all the materials is there. So we question the body and mind, asking questions. Ask, is this body permanent or impermanent? Is the feeling permanent or impermanent? Is the perception permanent or impermanent? Always we get the answer, no, it is not impermanent, it is impermanent. And we investigate. When we get the answer, yes, it is impermanent, we investigate. We look at it, pay mindful attention, use mindful reflection, experience, and see Dhamma, Sandittika, Akalika, Ehipasika, Opanaika, Pachatang Vedab. That is, Dhamma is directly visible, directly visible, unaffected by time, and immediately effective, inviting us to come and see, uh, and realizable by wise individuals, by themselves. And we investigate. All these are in this mind and body. Entire Dhamma, all the dependent origination is in this mind and body. All the four noble truths are in this mind and body. Everything is in this mind and body. We just investigate. What is the tool of investigation? Mindful reflection the mindfulness. With this mindfulness, this with, with this mindful, mindful reflection, we investigate. Why do we want to use these particular tools? We want to use these particular tools because we don't go astray. When we are mindful, the very function of mindfulness is putting us on the right track. Isn't it? Very fact, very, uh, uh, the function of mindful reflection is to reflect on the reality, on the, on the truth, so we don't go astray. And we will stay on the track, not, get, not to get confused, non-delusion. We keep investigating to see whether this is suitable or not, so that we won't, won't, won't get lost, we will have on the right, uh, what you call, clear comprehension. So, when we do this kind of investigation, there is nothing we leave out. We investigate the body, feelings, perceptions, Thoughts, consciousness, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, selflessness, dependent origination. These are the material we use for investigation. When we do this very mindfully, attentively, constantly, continuously, with mindful effort, fourfold effort, our investigation factor of enlightenment becomes perfect. When that, when that happens, we really become very active. Mind becomes very active. 
you will never fall asleep. Because the more you investigate, more enthusiastic you will be. Because more things will come into the surface. And you see everywhere something to investigate. When the mind becomes clearer and sharper and sharper, investigation becomes stronger and more powerful, and mind becomes very active, and then begins the mindfulness factor of energy. Only when the mind becomes active, powerful, through the investigation, mindfulness factor of in mindfulness factor of effort begins, not perfect, begins. Aradang hoti viryang asalli nang Buddha said. This, this, these words are like gold. They give the very powerful, very clear, precise meaning. Aradang hoti viryang asalli nang. Virya effort begins without uh, unremitting. Asalli na means uh, not, uh, sl not becoming weak not half-hazard effort, but full-fledged effort begins. So, energy factor of enlightenment begins. So, we keep on the same theme with the energy factor of enlightenment. Energy factor of enlightenment, when you have energy, you got to use energy for something. What do you do with this energy? You continue to investigate. When the energy arises, you continue to investigate. Then, energy factor of mindfulness becomes perfect. Because you don't leave out anything when it becomes perfect, you will be really glad, full of joy. Why full of joy? You see things very, very clearly. You know, friends, real joy, real happiness arises only when you understand things. Nobody can give you that kind of joy and happiness by faith, by money. Nobody can give, you us, give us that kind of happiness as we gain from knowing, understanding, seeing the truth. So when we see the truth uh, very clearly, the joy factor of enlightenment begins. Buddha said, Aradh viryasa upajyati piti niramisa. That is the important thing. Aradh viryasa upajyati piti niramisa. That is, when the enlightenment factor of effort becomes perfect, there will arise a joy without underlying tendency of desire. Without any underlying tendency of desire. When joy arises normally, we cling to it. As you know, joy is a feeling. When feeling arises, it arises with clinging, with, with, with craving. We just uh, said earlier when we do investigation, when uh, pleasant feeling, joyful feeling arises, uh, craving arises. But this joy arises without craving. 
Why is that? Because you began, this is called susamaradha in Pali, susamaradha. You began well. You began well with mindfulness. And that is your basis, your foundation. So long as the mindfulness is there to support your mind, there is no room for greed to arise when the joy arises. Because that is a buffer against the greed. Mindfulness and investigation also is there. Effort is there to you know, just in, in case, you know, just to give a strong fatal blow to greet. <laughs> Investigation is there to watch. Uh, mindfulness is there to keep you on the track. And everything is watching. And joy arises, pure, clean, uh, unalloyed joy arises without any underlying tendency of greed. And that is how joy becomes a factor. So when it begins, when it starts, uh, the effort is supporting it, mindfulness is supporting it, investigation is supporting it, uh, so that uh, it will remain uh, pristine, clear, pure, because of all these supports are there to protect it from getting affected, stained by greed. Therefore, enlightenment factor of joy becomes perfect. When the enlightenment factor of joy becomes perfect, without greed, uh, piti manasa kayo pi pasambhati, chittam pi pasambhati. When the joy factor is perfect, then the body of that person tranquils, pasambhati means tranquils, relax, mind becomes relaxed and tranquils. And that is the beginning of the factor of enlightenment factor of tranquility. Normally, if the joy is, uh, joy has the underlying tendency of greed, body will not become tranquil, relaxed, mind will not become tranquil or relaxed. Rather, body becomes agitated, excited, mind becomes agitated, excited, restless, so long as the underlying tendency of greed is there. When joy arises, you become restless. How I, I'm, how I'm going to get it? When I'm going to have it? When joy factor arises without underlying tendency of greed, that calms your mind, relax your mind. As a result, Piti manasa kayo pipasambhati, chittam pipasambhati, body relaxes, mind relaxes. Here body and mind don't mean mind and mental factors. Because whatever happens to the mind will affect the body. If the mind is agitated, body is agitated. Not the mental factors alone, that it doesn't uh, contain only within the mind. As some people say, kaya pasadhi, chitta pasadhi, kaya lahuta, chitta lahuta, and so forth. 
they are called they interpret to be mental factors when the mind is relaxed the body is relaxed when the mind is agitated body is agitated when the mind is restless body is restless so what happens to the mind will not uh, stay only within that area it affects the entire because whole body is um, connected with the men, mind and mental states when the body and mind are relaxed then passad kayas uh, sukhino chittam samadhiyati when the body is relaxed mind is relaxed happiness arises and that happiness collects the mind concentrates mind now uh, relax state of mind arouse uh, be joy that arouse our concentration concentration does not happen automatically you cannot gain concentration by artificial means uh, sometimes people uh, uh, in order to gain concentration they ask the people to create some you know smile on the face inside there may be all kind of rubbish the mind is totally filled with rubbish but put up put up little smile on your face and focus your mind there you gain concentration <laughs> in the buddha's day you will never find that true happiness comes from inner purity inner clarity and then arises concentration joy from that joy you really gain true real concentration ah actually joy and happiness are not distinguished here in this particular uh, factors of enlightenment but there is a distinction between joy and happiness joy arises in anticipation of fulfillment happiness is the fulfillment then when you gain happiness then you are content settled accomplished and then you have no worries whatsoever you are so relaxed you gain concentration then uh, last one is uh, equanimity when you gain concentration all the hindrances are suppressed here we talk about uh, jhani concentration not ordinary concentration hindrances uh, the the process does not show uh, the steps of attaining jhanas but it implies when you look at all these things you cannot gain this kind of concentration without jhana so this is the jhanic stage when you gain jhana the all hindrances are suppressed i said that uh, this has been indicated at the very beginning in the very first sentence of the mahasati patan sutta indicated all these things now here is a fulfillment coming to you know flowering and fruition of that indication at the beginning when the concentration arises factors of jhanas are in full fledged they work together in unison in harmony and the mind is in a balanced state there is um, initial thought sustained thought joy happiness concentration plus equanimity equanimity is not mentioned but equanimity is in the jhanic state there are certain jhanic factors at the first in the first jhana 
not mentioned, but they become slowly manifest as you go to higher and higher and higher jhana. In the highest jhana, this factor is most prominent. What is equanimity? What we do with equanimity is the next section. And that is very, very important aspect of this practice. Uh, we will discuss that tomorrow, but this afternoon I want to conclude the, the discussion on the factors of enlightenment. This is the list, this is how we gain, and then I have several other things to say about the factors of enlightenment to make it uh, uh, complete. I think we close the session now.